हॅलो मंडळी कसं काय आहात मजा येते ना ओके वी आर नाव गोइंग टू हॅव सेशन नंबर फाय प्रॅक्टिकल डेमो सेशन नंबर फाय अँड वॉट आर वी गोइंग टू डू टुडे येस वी आर गोइंग टू लू लर्न समथिंग अबाउट ब्रेन ओह वी हॅव अ डिसेक्टेड ब्रेन ऑलरेडी द गोड ब्रेन ओ माय गॉड दॅट समथिंग so here we have a goat brain and we are going to take into account the various aspects of the goat brain so this is going to be anatomy of goat brain basically and uh, you know every year uh, in the month of uh, january february or march you know we have the entire goat viscera studied here and for which uh, uh, we bring all the organs and i mean the lots of lots of things and uh, that's how we have these brains uh, preserved already uh, you have learned uh, recently uh, the uh, nervous coordination do you remember and so with respect to that theoretical portion you have some exposure about uh, the brain the mammalian brain typical mammalian brain um Uh, even though all it's a primary and uh, a foundation course and because you have learned and heard of uh, these parts of the brain for several days uh, in your schools and books i think it will be good if you have an opportunity to look at the brain um, first time maybe some most of you okay uh, let's now understand this is the picture of the goat brain and this will very much uh, match uh, if you if i allow you to look at this particular uh, way look at this so you have now the cerebral hemispheres and these are the cerebral hemispheres and you have the cerebellum here and you have the cerebellum here and lots of other details which i can show closely so this has been uh, taken up from the net this is goat brain the sheep brain sheep brain actually but sheep and goat brains will be almost uh, uh, very much uh, identical so i would now go into some details of the brain you already know that uh, this is something which is present uh, in the cranium cranium that is a brain box which is a part of the skull uh here now i would like to point out uh, some of the parts here you have the cerebral hemispheres the two cerebral hemispheres the two cerebral hemispheres which are the main aspects of the brain that you know very well you have the cerebellum this is the cerebellum so cerebral hemispheres and cerebellum cerebral hemispheres are folded you know the sulci and the gyri do you know these terms sulcus and a gyrus so these are the sulci and gyri and that is to increase the surface area and why to increase the surface area if you have uh listen carefully to the lecture it was mentioned that most of the cell bodies of the uh, neurons are seated on to the surface so billions of uh, cell bodies are located on the surface and their axons are deeper down and to accommodate uh, so many cell bodies you need to have more surface area but uh, the overall size of the brain cannot be increased simply because there is a limit to the size of the head and so size of the brain and so naturally the only option is uh, to have surface uh, more surface area you must have folds so these are the folds even the cerebellum will have folds uh, i will now simply say that here if you can observe uh, this is the midline and this is what is called as medial longitudinal fissure this one you can observe it here this is the medial longitudinal fissure this one which divides the two parts of the 
cerebrum, each part being known as cerebral hemisphere. Now, each cerebral hemisphere has lobes. Do you remember? Uh, it was told to you. And whatever we learn for the human brain is applicable for the goat brain. At least uh, the morphological details, the anatomical details. And whatever is applicable for the goat brain is applicable therefore for the human brain uh, general idea, general structure. Here you have the frontal lobes. Then you have the parietal lobes. Frontal lobe, parietal lobe. This is the occipital lobe. Frontal, parietal, occipital. And side lobe is temporal. Let's have it from this side. Once again, frontal, parietal, occipital. Frontal lobe, parietal lobe, occipital lobe and here is the temporal lobe. So, these are the lobations and uh, here deep inside there is a structure which is known as diencephalon which is not seen from here but I am just pointing out the location. Deep inside here there is diencephalon. Um, actually, if I hold it this way, you can now have a picture. This is the ventral aspect of the brain. So you have now here the ventral aspect of the brain. So you will find uh, once again the, uh, I will point out to the uh, temporal lobe. You can see from the side the temporal lobes are there. Okay. And lower side of the frontal lobes is there. Uh, as you can see here, what are these two? Look here. These are the olfactory tracts. These are the olfactory tracts. And then the olfactory nerves are cut here. Uh, this is a mammillary body. Can you see this uh, double structure here? This is a mammillary body. And although because the pituitary usually uh, remains within the skull when the brain is taken out. So otherwise, I am just showing you the position. Here is a position where the pituitary gland was present. Uh, then you can, you can imagine this is the pons. This is the pons veroli, pons and the medulla oblongata. Pons, medulla oblongata and part of the cerebellum. Once again, this is the ventral view or you can say the inferior view of the brain. And this is the superior view that is the dorsal view of the brain. Uh, there can be many details and uh, oh, we are uh, not going to take uh, any section here. Uh, so, mm, I will not go into further details. Um, I think it is possible that we will keep this information in mind and then go for observation of the human brain. But I am sure you are not expecting actual human brain because that's not possible. That's not, that's not, uh, that's not possible. Oh, it's not possible to have a human brain here. So goat brain you have seen. Uh, for human brain, I think mostly we'll see the pictures with a small uh, pause. Let's have now some revision about the human brain uh, by way of pictures, of course, mostly. Uh, but then we will still have the goat brain uh, just uh, as a side reference. Uh, you are all aware that uh, human brain is uh, located uh, in brain box. As you can see in this picture, this is the skull. And part of the skull is the brain box. So all this is the part of the skull in which brain is located. It's called as cranium. Cranium that is brain box. And then from the brain, the spinal cord begins and the spinal cord is present in vertebral column, which is called a spine. So it's very well protected. Uh, I think uh, it will be good if we once again have a look at the skull and show you the skull. So here is the human skull. You are aware and uh, the cranium is the brain box here. I just open the cranium and it's empty now. It's empty because the brain has already been taken away long, long back when the skeleton was being made. 
So once again I say that this comes from the medical college and this was uh, obtained by Dr. Sakte Joshi, a famous orthopedic surgeon of Nasik and uh, who has been my friend and once upon a time he was my student, I told you already and we always meet together and uh, we remember those days when we started using this long long back in 1997-98. So this particular skeleton has been used by uh, thousands of students, they have actually handled. You want to handle them? You can, you can always handle them, why not? Because many of you are feeling uh, that when you are going to get the opportunity to do all these things well. Uh, let this be, year be over. I am sure this year is all going to be full of challenges for the entire world and we have taken up the challenge and we are going to uh, meet the requirements uh, because of the pandemic and we are going to surely be able to meet. I, I feel uh, that once our uh, 12th standard begins, uh, we will be able to do most of those things uh, because it seems that online course like this foundation and after that the online 11th will begin and that will continue maybe uh, that will be continuing till February and from March will begin with the 12th by that time I think I hope that situation will be better and hopefully we will be able to start having a regular class of the 12th and that time some of these things we can repeat anyway but 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 always to be uh, optimistic about these things so this is the skull and this is the brain box see skull has many bones uh, there are facial bones these are all bones of the face facial bones and then the cranial bones I'll just make a mention of the few bones of the cranial box you know these are uh, uh, bones uh, have the same names as the brain parts so these are the two frontal bones these are the two parietal bones once again the frontal the parietal bones and then you have the occipital bones so frontal, parietal and occipital bones. Similar names are there, you know, when you think of the uh, brain parts, you have frontal, cerebrum parts, frontal lobe, parietal lobe, occipital lobe. So frontal bones, parietal bones and you have the occipital bones. So names of the bones and the lobes of the cerebrum, the, the names match of course. Uh, when you think of uh, the floor, this is a floor of the cranial cavity and this, can you see this uh, complete Y shape, uh, I mean the uh, bone which is uh, like a butterfly, this entire butterfly like bone, this whole thing, this whole thing butterfly like bone is being called as sphenoid bone, what's the name, sphenoid and in front of this sphenoid bone there is one more bone and that is called as ethmoid, sphenoid and ethmoid and there are other bones, don't worry about it. What is important for us to understand that there is a cavity in the sphenoid bone, can you see this cavity, this tiny cavity, it was shown to you during the lecture, do you know what is this uh, called as by chance if you know, yes some of you have said. Sela tarsica. <laughs> okay, so it is here that the pituitary gland is located. You can imagine the brain is here. Imagine this brain is here. Oh my god, I can't put a goat brain into human skull. That's not possible and that's not desirable. But you can imagine uh, the pituitary gland will be on the underside of the brain and human brain will be much, much larger, of course. And this is how it will be present. And the pituitary gland will be lodged. It will be placed here uh, in this cavity, let's say lateral sicca. That is the reason when uh, brains are taken out, if enough care is not taken, then the pituitary gland remains there because it gets cut off. And that's how uh, here in the case of the goat brain, pituitary gland is not seen. Uh, so this is the thing and can you see this big uh, gateway? You know, it is this gateway through which spinal cord comes out. So you can you can say that spinal cord will come out of this one. This is the gateway through which the spinal cord will come out. This one. So the brain is located here. The spinal cord then will pass out here. So once again, imagine this is the brain box, and uh, 
it will be the brain located here and uh, you can see here this passage through which the spinal cord will come out and immediately there is a vertebral column out there. So that is uh, about the brain box and then we can have some of the pictures uh, look at this particular picture. Here you can observe very clearly uh, the uh, Celsius and the gyri, you know, a, a slice has been taken up here. Frontal lobe, parietal lobe, the greenish occipital lobe, symbolic colors of course. And a slice has been taken out here to indicate what is a sulcus and a gyrus. This elevated portion, the fold is called as gyrus. And between two gyri, gyrus is singular, gyri is plural. Between two gyri, there is a sulcus. So sulcus is depression and uh, gyrus is an elevation. So the entire brain is folded and there are lots of uh, interesting things uh, that you might have heard about uh, the folds. And the more the folds, more the intelligence and Einstein's brain, this and that. Well, I'm not going, in, going into those details, but there is some limited, uh, uh, there's a limited importance to those things. A cortex and medulla. Look here, it was told you that a few millimeter cortex is there and then inside there is a medulla. Well, cortex is that where the cell bodies are present. It was clearly told to you uh, in the lecture that the cell bodies are present uh, here, millions and millions, billions actually. Cell bodies will be present here and uh, fibers will run inwards. There are many details of this uh, anatomy of the brain and uh, we are doing it very much superficially. Longitudinal fissure, this one, and it was already told to you, uh, even in the case of the goat brain, there is a longitudinal fissure here. There is a longitudinal fissure here. Okay. Uh, we will now have one more picture. Yeah, uh, you are all aware that uh, mapping has already been done for the human brain. And this is something where you can find out uh, the different areas. Basically, first uh, let us find out this is the front side, anterior side. So, this is frontal lobe, and then this is the parietal lobe, and this is then the occipital lobe. So, frontal, parietal, and occipital lobes are there. You can see the parietal lobe here. So, frontal, parietal, and occipital lobes, and you have some centers. For example, mm, there is uh, what is called as uh, motor speech area if I'm talking just now it is because my motor speech area which is called as Broca's area is sending signals to my speaking apparatus that is a uh, larynx and also to my tongue and also to my muscles of the uh, cheek and uh, related other muscles which make possible the speech. So all my signals for uh, the speech which I am doing just now are coming from Broca's area. It's a motor area because it is sending motor signals, the orders. Then you have a, uh, association area which is located here. That is called as auditory association area because there is an auditory area here. So hearing is possible here. Then you have visual area. Visual area is that which is on the back side of the occipital lobe and the visual area is uh, meant for ability to perceive vision. You know the perception is uh, something where you experience uh, that particular sense. Although eyes are uh, uh, getting uh, the photo stimulus, light stimulus and the eyes are able to convert um, uh, that photo stimulus into electric current and electric current has uh, imagine it's already reached the brain it is here that it will be uh, integrated perceived and so this is the area which is called as the uh, the vision area so lots of mapping has been done mm, uh, so it, it was not easy you know all these uh, various areas 44 areas have been indicated here and all these areas uh, have been um, mapped over uh, the last uh, more than 100 years and that has been done by animal experimentation 
putting electrodes rarely on humans also indirect data can be obtained and also uh, understanding uh, what way uh, humans uh, have uh, these areas particularly uh, some of the um, uh, some of the patients uh, who suffer accidents and then what uh, particular brain part is damaged and what function is lost and there are lots of complicated things uh, i think we can have now the underside the lower side of the brain we have already seen this for the goat and now you can have a clear picture uh, here you have now once again the cerebrum part and then you have the cerebellum part this is cerebrum and this is cerebellum and then you have the pons and then you have the medulla oblongata medulla oblongata and then you have the spinal cord which begins here okay once again the big thing major part of the brain is cerebrum this is from the underside cerebrum then cerebellum then this is pons and then this is medulla medulla oblongata that's the last part and from where the spinal cord begins so i think it is possible to once again uh, consider uh, the scene which is rather similar although this is a, a picture from the tortoise book human brain underside and this is the goat brain but i can point out a few similarities so this is the pons here and here is the pons uh, unfortunately this has been much damaged now so things are not very clear uh, so uh, i would like to point out to these nerves you already have learned uh, that from the brain there are 12 pairs of nerves starting and here are those uh, 12 pairs i'll just uh, read out their names you don't have to worry you don't have to remember just now but during your uh, regular course of course uh, you will be told more about them and you will be then remembering them in sequence if you are interested i can uh, mention those names and you can repeat after me first i'll read all of them 12 pairs of cranial nerves is a peculiarity and this is the first nerve olfactory and as the name indicates it is something which is uh, which is getting the stimulus, the sensory stimulus from the nasal capsule uh, by way of olfactory bulbs and then the olfactory nerves are there and olfactory nerves will carry the message to the brain. Then you have the optic nerve, these two are optic nerve and they make a cross that is called as optic chiasma. Don't worry, you don't need to remember everything but some of these pictures are there in your books also, not this one, maybe the lateral view or the front view or maybe the top view. So once again, olfactory, then optic, then oculomotor, this one. You know, this is a nerve uh, which is supplied to the eye for the moment. Also then, you have the trochlear, this one. This trochlear is again a thin nerve which also supplied to the muscles of the eye. Then comes one of the thickest nerve, trigeminal. And this is the nerve, trigeminal, which is supplied to the jaws and uh, part of the tongue also. And this is very important nerve from a uh, medical point of view, dentist point of view, uh, because uh, it is this nerve which has a supply to the uh, rib, I mean the gums also. And then and the, the anesthesia which the doctors give will uh, make this supply of this nerve uh, numb. Then abducens, the shortest nerve is abducens, then facial, and then vestibulocochlear, the eighth nerve. That is actually concerned with uh, mm, hearing, cochlear, you know, cochlea, and vestibular is related to the balancing. I think uh, you will uh, definitely, hopefully, you will have observed the lecture, the second part of the nervous coordination lecture. And that time it was told to you that from semicircle canals, uh, there is a nerve coming up and uh, also from the cochlea there is a another piece of the nerve coming up and the two meet together and they run to the brain so there is a vestibular cochlear nerve which is eighth nerve glossopharyngeal the ninth nerve the glossopharyngeal and then you have the vagus nerve the tenth nerve uh, they, I, I put a star mark here because vagus nerve is that which goes to the inner organs you know uh, branches of the vagus nerve they go to the stomach, intestine, liver, pancreas, lung, heart, 
Vagus nerve is even important. It is the longest of the cranial nerves. And there are others like accessory, spiral accessory and hypoglossal. You don't have to remember all of them, but I will just uh, utter once and if you are interested, you can repeat after me. All of you say, olfactory, optic, oculomotor, trochlear, trigeminal, abducens, facial, vestibulocochlear, glossopharyngeal, vagus, accessory, hypoglossal. One thing, um, mammals have 12 nerves, birds also have the 12 nerves, the same sequence, and reptiles also have 12 nerves and the same sequence. And most of the parts of the brain of the reptiles, birds and mammals are very similar. And this is not uh, something that you are hearing for the first time. What you will call all this similarity? Yes, it will be called as homology. So basically, just like heart structures are homologous, the brain structures are homologous, the nerves are homologous. Uh, the number of uh, nerves, the cranial nerves, which are starting from the brain, their number is little less in um, fishes and amphibia. Uh, fishes have only 10 pairs of cranial nerves and amphibia also have 10 pairs. But reptile birds and mammals have 12 pairs. So that's about the um, arrangement. Uh, I think I'll just uh, take this opportunity to show you a little complicated thing. You may probably uh, wonder what it is all about. But uh, interesting thing is that uh, attached uh, to the lower side of the brain here, uh, there is a pituitary gland and you know this very well. And there is a stalk here, the infundibulum. And to which the pituitary gland is attached. All this is hypothalamus. And I think this hypothalamus is very famous. And you already know. And in the worksheet, a question has been raised about the hypothalamus. You know, hypothalamus is a region which actually originally belongs to nervous tissue. It is a part of the brain. But hypothalamus also secretes some hormones. In the hormonal coordination lecture, it was told to you that uh, some of the hormones of the hypothalamus they control pituitary. So this is a part, it originally belongs to brain that is nervous system, but because it also produces some hormones which control the pituitary, you can say that this also belongs to endocrine system. So this is something which is common between the uh, nervous system and endocrine system. I am talking of hypothalamus. If this is hypothalamus, then this is hypophysis. You know, pituitary gland is called as hypophysis. <coughs> and this is the optic nerve. And there are lots of things uh, which I don't uh, want to repeat them. But pineal gland is something you may be interested in knowing. Because, you know, pineal gland is something uh, which makes uh, our uh, rhythm. You know, the circadian rhythm, the 24-hour rhythm. And in the lecture, it was told to you. Uh, that uh, it is the pineal gland which produces uh, a hormone known as um, melatonin and it is uh, required for uh, um, inducing sleep and there are lots of other functions of course. Uh, quite complicated, you know. Uh, in your first year MBBS itself, we will have lots of details about the brain that you are going to learn and uh, yes, uh, uh, these things uh, which you are learning will be helpful to you. Even if you don't want to go to medical, that doesn't matter because knowing about brain is one of the wonderful opportunities. Uh, I have one more picture to be shown to you and that's about the limbic system. So here it is. Limbic system. Uh, in the lecture, you might have heard that there is something like a limbic system in the brain. I'll just uh, make a comment about the limbic system. Uh, basically, all the green things which are shown here... Mm, they are actually part of the cerebrum, uh, part of the cerebrum, part of the uh, other regions. And uh, I think uh, you will have some interesting names uh, heard. Amygdala. <laughs> and then hippocampus, this one, hippocampus and such things. There are lots of uh, areas here and all these areas taken together they make what is called a limbic system. Actually, these are parts of the brain, otherwise also doing several functions. But it appears that the limbic system, which is now shown here uh, by these uh, 
this green shading is something which is uh, so to say called as emotional brain and that 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 pdf uh, sheet has uh, with you and you will read that a uh, few lines about this emotional brain why it is called as emotional brain because it is something which controls your behavior it is something uh, uh, where um, primitive uh, instincts uh, like uh, fear rage aggression uh, to some extent uh, memory and to some extent learning is also possible this is very important part of the brain because uh, that saves life you know it is a limbic system uh, which helps us to uh, ultimately uh, defend ourselves uh, if you if you have seen a cat if you uh, if the cat is not friendly with you and if you try to harm the cat then it will probably uh, try to um, behave in such a way uh, that uh, you will be uh, afraid a little bit suppose <laughs> because if you are a, a new person to that cat so that is that is all you know the animal instinct they just want to save themselves and they, they want to um, behave in a way uh, which will be probably uh, either a offense or a defense and so on uh, so limbic system is very important it's emotional brain and that's an important part but it is a primitive thing that's all important uh, I think uh, with this, so with a pause, uh, I can go for a few more pictures. Uh, a little bit of uh, understanding about the development of the brain. I must mention very specially here that brain is the first organ which starts developing. That's very important uh, because it has been shown uh, that uh, the developing brain will also be able to regulate the developing body. And so, heart and brain, they are, uh, they start functioning quite early. Uh, the entire nervous system is uh, formed uh, from what is called as ectoderm. Do you know by chance this term, ectoderm, mesoderm, endoderm? If you know, good. If you don't know, no problem. Uh, but uh, when the fertilization occurs and the zygote starts developing and a very tiny embryo is produced, there are three layers of the body that of the embryo outer ectoderm middle mesoderm and inner is the endoderm so don't worry about it but the entire nervous system is formed from ectoderm uh, so this is how it begins mm, this is the beginning part of the brain which is called as forebrain this is the middle part which is called as the midbrain and <laughs> so the midbrain and the hindbrain. So forebrain, midbrain, hindbrain. These are the three parts which can be recognized quite early. This is less than one month. This is a three to four week old embryo. And uh, this is a seven week old, less than two months. And see how fast this develops. Uh, this is the forebrain of the first month and this is the forebrain of the second month. You can see the colors will tell you the midbrain and then the hindbrain. The brain is growing very fast. Now, consider this is a, a situation uh, which is uh, less than three months and you already have the forebrain develop much more and the midbrain and the hindbrain. And the uh, baby is now taking uh, a proper shape <coughs> and brain is very important. It is during this time that there must be proper nutrition for the mother, there must be proper uh, thyroid function, uh, proper iodine supply, then thyroid will work and thyroid is required for the development of all body parts and definitely for the brain. Uh, then uh, if this is less than one month, this is little less than two months and little less than three months and then nine months over and at the time of birth, the brain is ready. So imagine. <coughs> Forebrain develops this much, develops this much, and all this is forebrain. You can see very clearly here the cerebrum, and uh, uh, you can you can also like to look at the cerebellum, cerebrum and cerebellum, and you have the cerebrum here and the cerebellum here. All parts are well developed, and the middle of the and the spinal cord. 
uh, it's very interesting uh, if the developmental studies of the brain are done for different vertebrates again surprisingly there will be a lot of similarity please understand so the way the human brain develops is all the same the way the brain develops in the other animals yeah sometimes we do have uh, we, we bring the fertilized eggs uh, uh, of the birds and try to uh, allow them to grow here and then we are able to take out the embryo and study those things um uh, actually we really are missing you people here to be very frank <laughs> but then what to do uh, so we have to continue with this kind of uh, demos and even this is good one good thing for you is that when there are 20 25 students at a time because we have lots of batches for that then not everybody is able to s look at those things uh, with comfort now we uh, being this uh, particular situation of online each one of you has got this opportunity as if the whole thing is going on, going on only for you so you can have close looks so that's a benefit so that's a great advantage of online but then of course um, the shortage is that you are, you cannot be here but i think i we really want because we are having a lot of uh, enthusiasm <coughs> to arrange these things and uh, maybe that when you come in april march april for 12th uh, that time maybe that some of these things can be repeated even your senior batch who is now undergoing their 12th uh, online uh, they have done many of these things uh, but then this time they have missed uh, the dissection of the bird because it was planned in the month of april and that bird dissection of course they have missed but uh, for them i don't know when we are going to arrange it maybe possible later on so i think uh, these are very important thing for ab science the science is learned uh, uh, through actual experiences of this kind and maybe that once you join in for the uh, transitions maybe some of the 11 things we can repeat but I'm not sure I mean nothing can be guaranteed just now but we would definitely love to do all that for you so this is something and now I'll go for a very different aspect here I have now uh, about the brain waves and you can understand Mm, this is uh, what is called as EEG. You know, ECG is different. ECG is electrocardiogram. This is EEG, electroencephalogram, encephalus. You know the head. It is possible that electrodes are placed on the different parts of the head, and then electrical activity of the brain is recorded. Wonderful. Heart has electrical activity, brain also has electrical activity. Electrical activity of the heart can be recorded and that record appears as electrocardiogram. And the electrical activity of the brain <coughs> can also be recorded and that is called as EEG. Yeah, it has got a lot of uses. Uh, four patterns are shown here. The gamma waves, the beta waves, the alpha waves, theta waves and delta. I repeat. Gamma, Beta, Alpha, Theta, Delta. I know some names are given. Uh, if you're learning, you know, you're learning just now, and I'm trying to trying to say something. So, if electrodes are attached to my brain, I mean my head, uh, you will get these kind of waves. If electrodes are attached to your head and map is taken, you'll also get this kind of uh, picture where you know it is a very high level brain activity. Uh, then suppose you are just uh, chatting with each other lightly, <coughs> even then your brain is busy, but not as busy as it is uh, in the uh, as in the process of learning. So, uh, so this may be busy and you are talking with someone. So these are beta waves and the frequencies are mentioned here, which I am not going to talk. When uh, you are relaxed, suppose you are uh, doing meditation, then your waves will become slow and their... Uh, uh, amplitudes will also change uh, and these are the alpha waves and sometimes you know you start feeling sleepy and then if that time the waves are recorded then these are the theta waves which look like this and when you are fast asleep then these will be the delta waves uh, wonderful uh, conclusions can be drawn uh, by recording the waves uh, and certain um, uh, certain 
diagnosis of certain of disorders can be done with the help of the uh, brain waves. I think here we can have a break, stop, and then continue. Uh, would you like to look at the brain uh, of uh, some bird? Okay, let's have it. Interesting. So here I have a sample of the brain of the bird. Uh, this is it. Look here. I'll show it this way to you. And this is the beak of the bird. So it's towards me. And you can see we have cut open the skull. And here you can observe these two big things. What are they? Imagine cerebral hemispheres. Two cerebral hemispheres. And this is cerebellum. Cerebral hemispheres and cerebellum. Uh, other parts are not being exposed. I'll just keep uh, for your reference uh, this brain of the uh, goat side by side. So I'll keep uh, for a big comparison the goat brain along with the brain of the bird. And you can compare. Oh my God. <laughs> this is actually, this is a, uh, this is a hen. And so bird is a hen here. Cerebral hemispheres, these two. And these are the cerebral hemispheres, these two. And this is the cerebellum and this is the cerebellum. Homology, perfect homology. And human, human brain, actual sample we don't have. But then you can also expect that arrangements will be similar. Cerebral hemispheres too. These are the two cerebral hemispheres. Cerebellum, this is the cerebellum. Uh, birds also have very nicely developed optic lobes, which we are not able to show them here. Uh, but uh, because, you know, usually birds depend more on the sense of sight. So that's about the uh, bird uh, brain and with a pause we'll continue. So let's revise a few things about the eye. Um, I have decided to go into some details of the eye, the model, and then I can show you the actual eye of the goat. Now, so you can understand the outermost is the sclerotic, the sclera, and the front part of the sclera is this one which is transparent and is called as cornea. So sclera and the front uh, transparent part of the sclera is cornea. And this middle layer which is shown here oh, with pink, actually it is black. Here in the model it is being shown with pink and this is what is called as choroid. So sclera, then choroid and here this yellow thing is all retina. And retina is very nicely supplied with blood vessels. Actually these belong to the choroid layer. Uh, so this is the arrangement and there is a lens here. You can see this lens. So this lens is present here and around the lens uh, as you can see here the dark brown thing that's iris, iris diaphragm and the hole through which the light enters that hole which you can see here this hole I'm talking about what you will call this as? This hole you will call it as pupil <laughs> through which the light enters. I'll put back the lens like this. Uh, optic nerve. You know, you can see here the optic nerve which is uh, emerging out of the eye. The retina has rods and cones which are not shown here. And there are several other layers of the cells, but important cell layer is uh, rods and cones. And from the outermost uh, layer of the retina, the neurons begin and the axons they make an exit and is the optic nerve. I am going to show you this optic nerve. Uh, in the goat's eye. So this is the generalized model and there are muscles and these muscles are supplied by cranial nerves and eyes can be moved in different directions and you know out of the 12 <coughs> cranial nerves it's interesting part out of the 12 cranial nerves three pairs of the cranial nerves are only for movement of the eyes. Eyes being so important structures nature has given 
out of 12 pairs of cranial nerves, 3 pairs of cranial nerves are supplied to the eyes. I think we will go for the eye of the uh, goat now. So here I am trying to use, uh, well this is the eye of the goat, this is the eye of the goat and we have of course two eyes. Oh my god, the colors are looking different <laughs> simply because we have uh, punctured one of them purposefully. And this uh, will be kept here, you know the eyes are placed in the socket like this. These are the sockets in which the eye is placed and you know skulls of all these vertebrates, they have a socket in which the eye is located <coughs> and there is lot of fat, you know, behind the eye there is lot of fat as you can see here as a, as a, as a as a cushioning provision. So that's how the uh, eyes are put and then uh, there is a lot of fat. So I will keep away this. I will now deal only with the uh, with this eye and I think I can use this dish again for that purpose and uh, once again you can expect this is this cornea part okay and if you want me to expose the lens I can take another uh, eye here mm. and I'll be, I will be, I hope I will be able to help you to uh, see the things uh, deeper inside, maybe here, I think, yeah, I think it is better here. So I will just give a cut here. And then, yeah, I have given a cut and some pigment starts coming out. Can you see this dark pigment? It is actually of the choroid. The choroid seems to be, uh, seems to have been punctured. And so the black pigment, you know, choroid is a middle layer and it has got a lot of black pigment. It is because of this black pigment that light rays uh, uh, are uh, restricted. I mean, uh, Otherwise, uh, there would have been reflections. You don't, you want refraction and image formation. You don't want reflection. I will try to cut it now, now more strongly. And I think I am going to show you the, oh my God, it's quite, uh, it's, it's quite uh, sturdy. Let us try to open it. Oh, I think uh, a part of the lens is popping out some liquid I'll be able to take out the lens now is damaged and not been able to pull out the lens uh, correctly. I'm sorry. I'm sorry for that. I got it messed up. Uh, so there is a lens inside. I think I'll be able to show the lens of the uh, of the bird. So here uh, this is the uh, eye of the bird and here uh, you can see once again the sclera and then there's a black thing that is choroid and then I think I'll be able to show you the lens here which has already been dissected out and I think it is uh, left here so I'll, this is the lens okay this was here I'll just put it here you can see the lens here this is the lens of the bird mm, um, it's a uh, it's seen to only a limited extent. 
and we can take a pause and then with that how is it coming to uh i think i got uh, messed up with the uh, one of the eyes uh, but i think i'll be able to do this and meantime i have cut open uh, the cornea and i hope uh, i will be able to go for searching of the lens uh, i am sure it is going to be there okay okay i i am able to do this now because already open and i just try to show you the lens now that's quite interesting i just hold this lens oh my god it oh yes it is here it is slipping off oh i'm just trying to hold it and oh my god that's it oh ho this is the great lens can you observe this this is the lens of the bird eye i'm sorry that bird <laughs> this is a goat eye uh, so the lens of the goat eye and i think i can also put it in the watch glass uh i can i'll just put it here and then i'll put it in the watch glass this is a lens by convex lens i can put it in the watch glass now this uh, this uh, dish this circular dish they are called as watch glass so here you have the mm, birds uh, lens and uh, this is the goats uh, lens it's quite interesting and human eyes will also have similar lens and you know you have heard of cataract and that's a problem with the lens and uh, that's it i'll just show you now the optic nerve uh, i think here um, i can show you the optic nerve because optic nerve is starting from the eye right um, so here i can show you the optic nerve i'll hold it can you see this optic nerve very clearly from the back side of the eye this stalk like structure this one is the optic nerve it is a sensory nerve which starts from the eye and then uh, it goes to the brain it's a sensory nerve all the fibers are sensory and uh, they will carry the electrical impulse to the brain so optic nerve since so the second nerve you know olfactory optic oculomotor so this is the second uh, nerve optic nerve that's it sir uh, i think uh, now uh, we will uh, try to understand something about color blindness uh, this is a very very simple test known as a uh, Ishihara's test for color blindness. Color blindness, I think uh, most of you know, uh, it is a disorder you know, which is uh, known to be X-linked. You know, there are uh, two sex chromosomes, X and Y, and it seems that the X chromosome has uh, certain forms of the genes uh, which may be recessive in most cases. and those can generate some uh, issues some genetic disorders and this is a kind of a genetic disorder color blindness what is color blindness color blindness is a situation uh, where a person uh, is not able to distinguish between red and green it's very rare you know it's very rare that a person is not able to see any color that's not color blindness color blindness is usually restricted to red and green i know they are not able to correctly identify uh, red and green now it's very difficult for most of us to understand this because we are able to understand what is red and what is green but you know ultimately it is those cones you know the different colors are possible due to different kinds of cones which are present and they are working genetically maybe may become defective in some cases and it is possible to relate those defects uh, with a certain genes on the x chromosome um without going into those details uh, i'll just uh, tell you uh, we we'll have a close look uh, at these things uh please try to uh, read this number or oh, you would say oh, it's so easy it is 74 yes i'll read what is mentioned here Ishara's test for color blindness. In this test, 
द रेड ग्रीन कलर ब्लाइंड पर्सन विल रीड इट एज ट्वेंटी वन एंड द नॉर्मल पर्सन विल रीड इट एज सेवेंटी फोर आई थिंक मोस्ट ऑफ यू हैव इन एबल टू रीड दिस एज सेवेंटी फोर बिकॉज यू आर नॉट कलर ब्लाइंड एंड दो आर कलर ब्लाइंड वेरी इंटरेस्टिंगली दे विल रीड इट एज ट्वेंटी वन द स्पॉट्स आर अरेज इन सच अ वे uh that the test will uh, automatically reveal whether the person is color blind or not i think this must have been a great job of the scientist who must have devised this like that many such color blindness tests are available uh the uh, uh percentage of the people with uh, red green color blindness is very very low very low one in lakhs moreover uh, it's very interesting to know that color blindness if at all it is present uh, in the population it is almost always surely likely to be present in males not in females and there are reasons for this which we are going to learn you have this topic some uh, for your uh, 11th and 12th course later on and we are going to talk about it uh, the only thing is that males have only one x chromosome because they are xy and females have two x chromosomes xx so for certain reasons um uh, females are less likely to have be color blind okay same thing again one more one more similar test what number can you read here i think you are able to read 42 yeah if you are reading this as 42 that means you don't have color blindness in this test the green color blind person will read it as 4 and a red color blind person will read it as 2 oh my god but we are all able to read it as 42 so that's color blindness and i think uh, in certain professions uh, they want people to be able to identify uh, clearly uh, the red and the green and there are uh, there are examples about these things and typical mcqs which will appear later on uh, how this is transmitted from uh, parents to the next generation but i think that is not our concern today uh, uh last thing that i want to talk today is about a very simple um test to know where is your blind spot <laughs> this is about your blind spot you know this test is about blind spot what is generally done is that you know you can do this uh, easily at home I just take a paper and uh, mark out such uh, symbols mm, what you do is uh, see what i'm doing uh, you know blind spot is something you know when the optic nerve is uh, making an exit from the eyeball at this particular uh, place you know where the optic nerve is uh, making an exit rods and cones are absent rods and cones are absent where the optic nerve is making an exit so there if light rays fall light rays can fall in different places and uh, if the light rays fall on this area no image will be formed <laughs> so it is possible to know and this is normal everybody has that blind spot what do you mean by blind spot it is a concept where uh, rods and cones are missing at the place at the point uh, where the optic nerve is uh, making an exit and uh, uh that you can plot uh this is a very simple model <laughs> and many such models are easily available and um i have very proudly mentioned that uh, this is uh, one simple model um which uh, has been given to us by our ophthalmologist friend dr milind dikshit and he has been um, uh, a gold medalist uh, from the bj medical college in ophthalmology and he has been practicing in nasik for several years and yeah his daughter is there with her said the standard 12 you know, the current standard 12 and uh, uh, i think we have been very close friends myself and uh, dr milin dikshit and yes he has been my student long 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 back 1993 wonderful thing that i am enjoying my profession from that point of view because uh, Uh, i always feel uh, nice to be linked with uh, several people around uh, i will now tell you now once coming coming to this uh, blind spot concept what you do is this way uh, suppose I, i i want to close one eye okay i close one eye 
and I'll try to look at this plus sign. Okay, I'll try to concentrate on the plus sign. I'm closing one eye and I'm bringing this paper closer and closer slowly. Yeah, at this particular distance, I can't see the black spot. It means this time at, at this distance, the light rays are falling on my blind spot and therefore, uh, therefore uh, this black spot is uh, no more seen. I take it back again. I can see the black spot again. Now I can't see it. It is this way. You can just make a paper and try it. There are procedures available by which uh, you can actually uh, uh, you can actually map the blind spot. But then I think <coughs> that you can find out from net and you can do it uh, for your purpose. I think with this uh, uh, with this much of work, uh, it is good that we uh, we stop for the day and we will have one more uh, session later on. I think this was our demo number five. We'll have demo number six and some interesting things we want to show you. I hope uh, you want to enjoy all these things. And uh, the, you know, a, a video appeal has already been made to, made to you and uh, three of us will talk to you, myself uh, and our team, uh, Rishikesh Patil sir and uh, um, Kostub sir. And uh, there is a PDF, uh, material and form given to you and uh, you are supposed to fill it up and uh, send it to us. I think you are saying you are going to do this. That is just to know whether you are, you are likely to continue with this kind of a program for the standard 11 online. Most of you are ready I know but then it is better that we should have a confirmation from your side and then during the 11 we will have lots of such uh, demos done. I mean almost uh, every lesson every topic has so much of information and so many things that we can arrange because in our day-to-day -day practice also during regular or offline we arrange it at exactly the same thing uh, we are doing it for the online things also and uh, in that case if you are uh, likely to be with us we'll be extremely happy and we'll enjoy every such session and thank you so much for this purpose